<laughs> we've I've learned not to just sit here and 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 look back and forth waiting for it to come on. <laughs> because then people will say, nothing's going on, nothing's going on. <laughs> I have to get the cue from from the boss here for when we're ready to go. Perfect. And, and we're on. And three, two, one. Welcome to Real Hospitality Live. God, it's good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> I have good. Peter Hall today from Res Plus in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. How you doing, Peter? I'm doing great, Jason. Thanks very much for having me on the show oh, today. I'm thanks so for coming on this. during all of this cuckoo-ness and, and finding time. I know that you're also you're keeping busy and supporting your restaurants that you work with. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, in fact, I, I you know, it, it, it seems like uh, COVID just means you work three times as, as much for half the revenue. <laughs> it seems to be, and I hear this across all of our customers. They're all saying that, like, they, yeah. they've never worked so hard, right? And uh, and just seeing this lack well, this of revenue coming in, too. We also, I mean, and now's the time to to make sure that you're staying relevant, relevant out there, too, right? Like, just Absolutely. making sure that 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 your clients are, are, you know, getting that attention. They're doing the right thing. They're not withdrawing and they're, and they're, and they're putting out. Um, yeah. I mean, you're, we, we've, we had a, a two hour chat the other day about, about what <laughs> res plus does and the benefits and, and all of that. And, and it always gives me a warm and fuzzy feeling when the, when, when the pre call before the show goes for two hours and it could have gone for another two, which is, which is awesome. <laughs> Better hospitality through technology was your quote. I told you, know you I wouldn't steal it. I saved it. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> well, you know, that that really is is what we've really been trying to be at for uh, for so many years. You know, like it's been over 15 years now that we've been going with this. And and we've got uh, some customers that have been still with us since uh, from the very onset and still on with us today. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I I was looking on your website and and was absolutely thrilled to see uh, clients on there giving testimonials who have been with you for a decade. And, and yeah. you know, I mean, that's that, that in today's, uh, Hey, this is the next new shiny thing tells me that you guys are doing the right thing. Um, people believe in what you're doing. They appreciate what you're doing. Um, let's talk about res plus, uh, before, so before we kind of get into the, into the nitty gritty and the nuts and bolts here, the res plus in my opinion is uh, <laughs> is a, a product and a service that shows that you actually learned about and spoke to people in the restaurant industry before <laughs> you decided to make the technology. And I, and I mean, there are there are reservation systems like uh, like Open Table, and I can name drop a whole bunch of them um, that that don't have even remotely the features that you have that really are meant to to work with and help the operator yeah 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 because uh, because our approach when we when we entered this problem space is uh we we had a completely different view of 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 what online reservation experience should be for a guest and and ours was was very much uh um we wanted to provide the technology to the to the restaurant so that every encounter that they have with the guest the guests should never know who Res Plus is. They should only know the name of the restaurant. They should only know the colors of the restaurant. They should only know the fonts that they use. They, they should only know the brand, right? They should be all right. about the restaurant. And, you know, if you deal with a, a company like Open Table, what you're seeing is their brand. Every consumer knows Open Table. Right. In fact, they, they may make a reservation for your restaurant, but as far as they're concerned, they really made that with Open Table. They, they don't really think of the restaurant. And, right. and uh, so we see we see Open Table not as much as a competitor. We see them more as a, a sales channel, if you will. So it's just like Expedia. You know, if you if you have a you know a lovely uh, uh, boutique uh, hotel in, in in downtown or something like that, um, yes, you can make a reservation for that boutique hotel through Expedia. But I think that boutique hotel would much prefer you make the reservation directly with them. Right. Right, right. So, and, and and not to say that Expedia isn't an important sales channel for these hotels, but they take twenty percent of every dollar. Right, right. And and so there's very heavy transaction fees, and, and we wanted to provide a technology that encompassed everything that a restaurant needed 
for their web presence, whether that be their online reservations, whether that be keeping their menus right up to date, whether that be selling uh, e-gifts online uh, for their guests, uh, whether that be today online takeout ordering, uh, whether it be any marketing program, all these kind of things, we want to bring them all together in one single package. And you could take a look at your guests from all the different ways that they use your restaurant, whether that's leaving guest feedback for you or whether it's shooting them over to TripAdvisor so they can leave a review for you. That's, that's where we saw it. So in fact, I don't see OpenTable as a competitor. I just see it as more of a, another sales channel to bring reservations to your, to your restaurant if you've got that extra capacity. But for heaven's sakes, why would you use open table on a Friday and a Saturday night when you've got everybody coming to your restaurant, uh, your website, you can take your own reservations and right. not have to pay a single transaction fees. Like why would you be paying $1,500 a month to open table uh, instead of, uh, instead of our, our solution? That's the thing about the hospitality industry and restaurants in general is that we are, we're more, we're more interested in serving the food and providing great service than we are in, in learning about technology and the way that works. We always say, oh, well, you know, we're going we're gonna to hire an expert and they're going to do it for us and, and, and they're going to handle it when we, when we ourselves don't really know what it should look like or how to go through with it. So we just smile and nod and say, okay, well, here's the, take a big check, right? <laughs> which, is, which is how third-party apps got us into a corner, I think. Um, yeah. the, what you guys do, though, is, is not just getting getting uh, a restaurant plugged into your system you actually set up their web their their web presence with them and make it make sense some of yes. the we've had a couple of great conversations about how you're doing that and let, let's let's have it with everybody else here now too yeah yeah exactly well let, let me just show you an example sure. of, of what we would do uh so i'm just gonna uh, um if you could let me uh, show my screen there for a moment i think you can do that from your end uh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. I'll have to. But we can come back to that. Sure. Uh, okay. Robbie's looking into it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. But we couldn't but do it without no, her, Peter. We couldn't do it without her. <laughs> she's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you folks are doing with real hospitality is amazing. I, uh, oh, thank you so I, much. I love it. You know, like uh, Thirsty Thursday. I, I, I saw that uh, a few weeks ago. Wow, that was amazing. Like it's just bringing everybody in the hospitality industry together. It's a, a kudos to you folks. It's amazing. That's, you know, it's what we love to do. We, we love to share hospitality as, as really as a global village. And when, when we see cool things, we want to share that with everybody. And, uh, and we love Kevin Brosh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, you man. Not, eh? <laughs> oh. You know what is Kevin Brosh has got a heart of gold and uh, is just such a great guy. And for him to have done Thirsty Thursdays with us was uh, was just a hoot. Um, and there's more to come uh, of that, which is all, all the stuff that happens in the background that people don't know <laughs> that we do. <laughs> yeah. Which, of course, I, 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 I give all credit to uh, to to the boss. She's uh, <laughs> she handles all of that. I have no idea how she's. <laughs> So let's let's talk about a few of the key points while we're getting this set set up on the on the on the technology side. Um, what are some of the things that that you guys do to uh, help restaurateurs to have a good good web presence? What are some of the things that you would recommend uh, with restaurateurs who maybe aren't on with you now, but some of the things that they can look to do as well? Right, right. Well, the the first thing uh, about offering hospitality course is getting the pacing just right in, in your restaurant, right? Having the right amount of guests coming through your restaurant and making sure that you, you've got that, that time to, to, uh, to serve them properly, that the kitchen can respond appropriately to, to their orders and stuff like that. Because if, if everybody came into your restaurant at, at seven o'clock at night, well, that would be awful, right? Because if they all right. sit at the same time, the kitchen's just gonna get into the weeds. And, and really nobody's happy, right? And, and, and on top of that, um, you know, you likely wouldn't have got many table turns either if they all came in at seven o'clock too, right? Well, that's key, right? Yeah. And that's especially key now when we're going into a time when uh, we're only allowed to have 50% capacity. So you need to be able to, 
to to as we as we say throttle that, but control that table turn as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, as as one as one group of people leave, uh, you you want to replace them with another one. You want to have that all scheduled so that you can you can get as close to that fifty percent capacity, which is most likely what the government is telling them we're going to be doing as right. possible. Um, and, uh, and for certain. So, so with res plus we, uh, and most reservation systems do this, they can, they can say how many people can start at each time slot. Right. But we'll go even further than that. And we'll actually throttle the kitchen. Perfect. <laughs> so, and so what, what, what does that mean? Well, um, when we first started working with, uh, with, with Bacta, which is a really phenomenal uh, restaurant here, here in Ottawa, a, sh- a chef that was working with them and said, look, I'll cook for you, but I will not plate more than 18 plates in a 30 minute period. Now, okay. And by the way, I won't plate more than 70 plates in a two hour period. I don't know how you do your math or whatever you do, but that's what, that's what I want to, that's the way I want to cook. And, and, and when you're taking your reservations, you got to make sure that you, you stay under those limits. And as it turns out, once we put those into our algorithms, so far, it makes a lot of sense. Yes, because uh, I, I think everybody's gone to a restaurant once before where just as they arrived at the restaurant, there was this group, large group of 10 people that came in the restaurant just before them. And so they all sit down um, and, uh, and then in walks this deuce about 30 minutes later. Well, <laughs> most likely their orders are hitting the kitchen at the same time. Right. And an experienced restaurateur, if they were taking that reservation over the phone or something like that, they would know to stagger that. You know, they, they could have the 10 come in at the same time as a deuce, but the deuce can't come in 30 minutes later, for example, right? Right. Because they're both going to hit the kitchen at the same time and, and nobody's going to win. Well, that's it, the, the and, and kitchens everywhere. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's true. And, and, and it works. And you end up getting your great pacing. Like, I, I think if you worked, when you work in the hospitality industry, likely pretty sure you'd never want to go to a restaurant on February 14th because the pacing is just so hard to get right. And, but with our customers, uh, they're, they're actually utilizing our system on February 14th more than ever, just because it can sort out all that pacing completely. We've got right. a nice flow of, of guests coming through the restaurant. Uh, you have a sense of how many walk-ins you'll have and the juicy time slots fill up first and then the shoulders start to, to fill up after that. Well, it takes a lot of pressure, I think, not only off of the kitchen, which is the obvious thing, uh, but it takes the pressure off of hosts and managers too for when groups show up uh, yep. and sh- you can you can take a look and, and say, okay, well, this is this is this is what we have seating. This is when we can seat again. This is this is what the kitchen can handle, and yep. this is what's going to keep people happy because it's one thing to get people to your door; it's another thing to impress them when they get there. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I, I think that the, and the cool thing about throttling the kitchen is, you know, of course we, we, we want, we want to have the place full all the time, right. As, as, as owners and operators, but as kitchen guys, we're going, okay, so whose bright idea was it to, you know, seat 50 people at once. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then of course, cause somebody's at the beginning of that chit and somebody's at the end of that chit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so with, with web presence specifically, what are some of the things that, that you recommend that, that restaurateurs have on their site and to, to make things cleaner and more functional? What right. are some of the things that you coach people on? Okay. So let me, let me just share my screen here yep. and, um, and I'll, I'll show you, uh, this is another restaurant here in Ottawa. So, so today, uh, when, when the average person, average visitor goes to your website, and by the way, you will, as a Canadian restaurant, uh, get somewhere between 3,000 and 8,000 unique people to your website each and every month. Okay. Right? So that's a lot of traffic, right? I mean, social media is really super important, but there are a lot of them, most people will end up on your website at, at one point or another. And so when they get to your website, you want you, you've only got them for about a minute and 20 seconds, which isn't very long, right? Like the same attention span as a goldfish. Yes. And so with a few photos, the best way to, to communicate what, in this case, this is Gazellic here in, in Westboro, with a few photos, you can immediately communicate to that guest 
what your concept is all about, right? We can see it's, right. it's a nice restaurant, a little bit more upscale, um, not too pretentious by the looks of it and stuff like that. And then we can go down and see just a little bit of an overview of what's so unique. Like, why is Gazelle the place to go for me? And they're going to position themselves. So not a lot of text, just a little bit. And, and then a little bit more photography to give the guest a sense of what is this restaurant all about. And from the plating here, we can see that, yeah, these guys are, are upscale. I'm going to have a really nice experience here. And likely immediately you've communicated to the guests that great spot to go for your anniversary or birthday or something celebratory. Yeah, it looks like it for sure. Right, right. And, and, then, and then you can immediately see uh, the reservation and then you can see what the, the restaurant's going to be looking like. Um, but all the colors, all the fonts and everything like that is just completely in tune with, with that particular restaurant. We'll, we'll uh, give a quick little section here. I love, with I love that it's in them. their colors. And like you said about open table, uh, as a, just as an example, it's, not, it's yeah. not open tables colors. It's the client's colors. Absolutely, right? Yeah. yeah it's, it should, branding yeah. is awesome. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. And, and then a call to action if you want to drill down on these menus, because that's, that's a big part of it but not to overwhelm, right? And then a big part of their uh, offering is, is doing private dining and a call to action for that. Some new things that are happening for their announcements, easy to understand when the hours are, a map to get there. And let's, let's say, you know, you can also purchase a gift certificate for friends and family, um, links to, to other things. But you can see that we got through that page very quickly, right? Right. And in a snapshot, we've got a whole sense of, of what this restaurant's all about. It's a lot of information in, the, in, in not having to scroll down nine screens. Exactly, right? So a lot of designers today will, will put uh, the entire website on one single long scrolling page. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so when we started looking at this and really diving into how uh, different uh, genders and different age groups uh, work and, and inter interact with your web presence, uh, we've landed on this being a really nice, succinct homepage, and then you can dive into the details. And from here, for example, you might be more curious about, you know, what what is this restaurant all about? What's uh, what, what what do they do? And so we can we can we can click on links and and dive into that and see a, a little bit more detail. Um, so they they've got uh, in this case they're they're showing some beautiful plates of food and a little bit about the owner and right. about their managing partner. So you're seeing food and bios at the same time, which, which makes it, creates a lot more interest, right? Yeah. You know, you're just Definitely. getting more and more, more sense uh, of, of what, what this is all about. And if we go to the menus, one of the things uh, that we did as a company is we licensed some technology that can actually, whenever you print your menu off that evening or, or that, that afternoon, you can also save it as a PDF and you can upload it to Res Plus. And within a few seconds, our system will actually take that PDF file, but convert it to an image that's appropriate for whether you're looking at it on a tablet, oh, or a phone, right. or a tablet horizontal, or a laptop, or a desktop, all these different sizes. But the menu is exactly the same as you will see when you go into, in this case, go, go in and, and dine at, at Gazelle. Uh, every little Nothing bit is worse than a, uh, than a website that's not updated. Right, right. And, and not right up to date too, right? Like that if, if you, if you're most, I mean, what, uh, what percentage of restaurants today, uh, uh, offer feature, feature, uh, uh, items on their menu, right? Lots. It's pretty much changes daily, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's, so. what's fresh or maybe something that didn't come in and you have to substitute for, like for example, I mean, I see PEI muscles on there, and right now it's it's hard to get things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And full disclosure, this is actually a snapshot of their their website pre COVID. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> that makes that makes sense. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, so but those are all the important things, and and uh, you know you should easily be able to buy a gift certificate online, and more importantly than, than ever today, it's it's. Uh, it's important that these, these gift certificates aren't necessarily always gift cards today, but maybe an e-gift. Uh, we, you know, maybe done are the days where we, we try to have as small a footprint as possible. So Res Plus, when, when you purchase a gift certificate on the restaurant's website, uh, you will also have full fulfillment of that gift, uh, gift certificate too. 
in, in, in that you will be emailed a certificate that'll have a QR code on there and everything's fully electronic. Peter, I got to say the, the site itself looks like somebody spent a ton of cash on having it made. And, 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 and I, I know ba based on what your system is, that's not the case. So let's talk about that for a second, because I mean, this looks sharp. Yes. What, 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 what does it cost a restaurateur to get a, a, a site like this? Okay. You? So yeah. And, and all these, there's, here's another example of one. Uh, following these same sorts of uh, things and stuff like that, we can we can make virtually every site uh, look look different to reflect your brands and what you're trying to do. Like uh, this particular restaurant wants something a little bit more playful, um, and uh, this one this one wanted to have more emphasis on takeout. The photography um, stunning, eh? It's just cool. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, this uh, this particular restaurant here is uh, this is a, a restaurant that's in the the top 10 restaurants here, here in Ottawa. Um, and uh, we actually shot all the photography for them. Wow. Uh, so we can do that for our, our customers as well. Um, but you really can start to get a sense of what they're all about. But yeah, in coming back to costs, um, for new customers, we charge $0 for setup. Okay, so we've, we've licensed some brand new technology uh, just this year that allows us to create these wonderful uh, restaurant websites that are optimized for uh, phone, tablet, tablet horizontal, laptop, and desktop, all together one things, and they'll all respond appropriately depending on which device. They'll hide and show different things depending on what makes the most sense. We'll go through and we'll customize all the correspondence to your guests, uh, whether you're sending out an e-blast to your guest, yeah. whether you're sending them out a, a nice birthday offer, an anniversary offer, uh, reservation confirmation, uh, a, a gift certificate, all of that corresponds, we'll do all the graphic and, and, and legwork and everything for you. Again, there's no cost for that uh, setting up for it. So and the then, setup of the site is included in signing on and there's no additional cost because I'm looking at this that's saying that's a that's a five to $8,000 uh, sit down with a guy is going to take three months to get I I I anything posted up. Uh, it's going to take forever and ever to to get things updated when I need it. Uh, it, that's been my experience in, in, uh, ever since the internet came out and, and, and somebody <laughs> introduced it to a restaurant door. It's, it's, it's been really expensive, really hard to manage and really time consuming for, uh, for operators to be able to have to talk to a developer to integrate all this stuff. Plus it's cost of fortune. Right, right, exactly. And that has been the place. But after 15 years of this, we, we've developed a lot of really good mechanisms and, and getting feedback from some terrific customers and just packaged it in, into one product that we can get you through. In fact, uh, most, most new customers will come live within seven days of calling us. Fantastic. The only thing that would slow that down is if we need to go in and do a photo shoot or they need to go in and do a photo shoot. Yeah. Usually it's the photos that are just so critical for this. Yeah. Um, but even photography, uh, a lot of people still today think that food photography is expensive and very difficult, but it really isn't. Um, so for example, our company will do a, a half day photo shoot, which will cover off your, all of your food photography, your interior, your exterior, some staff shots everything to get you live. And then you can use all those images for social media as well, of course. Fantastic. Uh, and, and we'll do that for 350. And I, and I think there's likely lots of other companies you can go out and do that for as well. I, so I, uh, I, I'm, I'm blown away that, that the, that the, the setup cost is, is included in, and somebody with a skeptical mind is thinking, yeah, but he's going to get you in the end. He's going to get, he's going to get your <laughs> wallet when you're not looking. So what, what's the, What's the, how, how do you guys charge uh, to work with you? Because most, most organizations are doing a, they're taking a, a, a chunk of your, of your sales on every sale. And that's a conversation that we talked about that we're, that we're going to have too. But that's, that, that's not the way that you guys are doing it. So how does, how does that work? Yeah, so our, our pricing is very simple. Uh, it's one flat fee. It's $198 each month, that's it for all, all services, your, your online reservations, your web presence, your gift certificates, wow. everything, your e-marketing all together in one. And there is uh, no contract with our services either, which is kind of unique in the industry. Most, most customer, uh, most, most vendors, if they're going to do this much, 
they would want to lock you in for at least 12 months for sure um, and perhaps longer uh, we we uh, said no we have to prove our value each and every month so there's no contract for their services there's absolutely zero transaction fees zero nothing uh, so the only bill you get from us is $198 per month, all in. And so you don't a, pay. There's for, not a per reservation or per order transaction fee with you guys at all. Absolutely not. No, never has been, and never will be. Uh, we uh, we don't believe in it. Uh, we uh, we we're charging for the technology is there. Yeah. Uh, you also don't pay for any uh, web hosting fees. We absorb all of that. Our background as a company was actually in in more of a large computing space. And we'd learned a lot of discipline about security and performance and how to make a web presence really so, uh, solid. And e-commerce 15 years ago when, when we were doing this for larger companies was quite expensive. But sure. we felt we could take all that, that, all that technology that we'd learned how to do. And if we rolled it out to many restaurants, we could divide the cost of that uh, into, into those, uh, those menus and have a low monthly fee for our, for our customers. And that's what we've stuck to, and it's and it's worked well. It feels to me like you put some thought into the into the way restaurants have to budget as well, because right now <laughs> we're we are in such in, in a place where you know there's such a debate about uh, about third party apps and and other systems charging restaurants so much that it's the, it, they're taking on so much water from these things that it's literally sinking their ships. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, in regions like Toronto and Vancouver, and, and now I just saw, um, I just read today uh, in the LA Times that they are, uh, they're going to do the same thing in LA where local governments are, mm -hmm. are imposing, for lack of a better term, um, mm -hmm. a sanction on how much uh, these third party app companies are, are allowed to charge, which I personally think is BS. Uh, but the... I think these I think these organizations didn't put into perspective what our margins are in the industry and 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 whether or not it makes sense yeah. for us to work with them. Really, many many of the many operators feel like they've been kind of bullied into using these systems because that was what's available, and this is just not that. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, it's interesting you bring that up because like, uh, uh, I think more specifically <laughs> you're talking you're referring to like the uh, um, the delivery services and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and I mean, and, I, I personally have worked with as a consultant, as a, as a, a subject matter expert with uh, uh, organizations that, that do like a pickup service and, and they'll do, they'll set up your, your website and, and, and whatnot. Um, but they're charging a still a percentage, which is a, still a significant percentage. And they don't, yeah. they're not even, they're not even uh, sending a guy to pick it up. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. It's, it's, it's true. I mean, uh, uh, I think a lot, if, if the municipal uh, governments and stuff like that in, uh, in Western uh, US are, are doing things like that, I think it really is, um, you know, people are really kind of upset with these, these high costs of delivery services. And I think what happens or what the feedback I'm getting from restaurants is, is that, you know, $16 is being charged for about $10 of food. Mm -hmm. And and guests are really perceiving these these uh, wonderful restaurants as being very expensive. In fact, that that revenue is not going to the restaurant at all. Right. And uh, and we had that feedback from from a number of our customers. So um, just before COVID started, we we were actually working on some online ordering, and we managed to uh, get it deployed right away. And today, uh, there's a lot of our customers that are just really working well with this online ordering. So. They've, they've quickly, let me give you one example. Here's a, uh, here's a restaurant that was all about, um, you know, um, individual dining, in-restaurant dining. But look right. at their, their navigation. Now it's all transformed to be the main call to action is, is takeout. But when well, we... The, that, that's, that's key to be, to be able to pivot in that way, to be able to even to be able to keep the lights on at this point. Oh, critical. Red. Yeah, right. And, and, they, and you know that they're working, like I said, we were talking about the early part of the show, they're working three times as much for half the revenue, yeah. but, but that, that's, that's their only way through this path, right? They've, they've got to uh, start chipping away. But, uh, so we, we built a system that was, um, you know, it's still their brand that they're keeping alive, right? Right. 
and uh, and it's just so easy to to order from them. So they can they can add to a cart, and you can see the cart respond uh, with another item in there. And uh, and I don't know about you, but uh, I you know maybe I want a nice bottle of wine to go with this as well. Right. <laughs> So, so now we can order liquor here in, in Ontario, I think pretty much anywhere in the country, right, too? I think, there, I think that's opened up now, yeah. Yeah, and so we can easily add all these, these items onto the cart and then have a very simple uh, checkout mechanism. That previous page, Peter, I mean, for anybody who's just joining us now and watching, now pay attention. This is, yeah. this is a, a very familiar ordering setup that if you've ever ordered anything online, this is how you do it. It doesn't, you don't have to, you know, learn a fancy new way and you don't have to try and figure it out. The cool thing is that this is, again, like I say, familiar, it's easy to use. You just go add to cart and the, and I'll, I'll let you continue on this page, but I, I really wanted to speak to that because people don't want to end up getting confused and, and, and find it difficult to use your site as a customer. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what, uh, Jason, I think the, uh, um, the part that our design team has landed on is simplicity trumps design. Mm. So, so you're always going to make your web presence for your guests as simple as absolutely possible. And we believe we can do both. We believe we can do simplicity and design at the same time. But if you ever have to choose, you're always going to err on the side of being simple. Right. And, and this just keeps guests coming back again and again and again, because if they get frustrated, they just, they just never return. Well, the cool thing about the previous page as well is there's not a whole lot of filigree on the side and, and, and whatnot either. It's just very clean, easy to navigate, easy to see what I'm looking for, you know, the, and the different sections in there are, are very well set apart. So I'm not, I, I don't have something blinking on the side and, and, you know, moving images and whatnot. This is not where I want to see that. I, I want to go in and read at this point and, and, may, and, and have, do that call to action, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, what's interesting though, Jason, too, is that, um, you know, uh, when, you are, when you offer delivery service, all the tips are going to the driver, the deli- the driver right? Right. Yeah. And, and, but, but people want, their favorite restaurants to stay in business, right? And so when we first put the system together, uh, we thought, well, we add a little tip system in there. What I'm shocked about is most guests, when we started looking at the data, are either tipping in the top category or the second from the top category. So they're either tipping 15 or 20% on every order. And you know, I've had some restaurant owners saying, well, no, they shouldn't have to tip. We're, we're already covering all these costs. No, they, they want to tip. They, they right. want restaurants to get hit to the other, the other side of this all. So, so that's, that's a really common is, is they're tipping high. And then the next screen is just choosing a, a delivery, a, a pickup time in this case to pick up at the restaurant. And this is what happens when you get a, a restaurant reservation company putting together an online ordering system is now all of a sudden that same wonderful pacing that we talked about at the beginning of the show for on in restaurant dining, we're going to apply that same pacing to pick up orders too, okay? So, so in this COVID world, we can't have everybody showing up to pick up their food. Uh, you wanna have that properly paced for safety reasons. Being able to pace that in, in this way is absolutely key too. Because if I've, I've been in restaurants where, where the, the phone is ringing and there's three or four tablets and they're all going off at the same time. And then the, individuals uh, the, or the restaurant website has got uh, an ordering thing going on. And now all of a sudden you've, you've got a full rail of chits. And again, yeah. somebody's at the beginning of that and somebody's at the end and they all came in within a 60 second period of time. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's, that's where res plus has put this together. So we expect, you know, for at least the next 12 months, Every restaurant is going to be doing a blend of some sort of in-restaurant dining For sure. and takeout ordering. So we've got our algorithms all working together so that you can have proper pacing of both. Fantastic. Right? They're going to they're going to work together in in harmony, right? So. And I think people don't mind seeing when it's going to be ready either. Like I think the and I I, I teach this even in service and, and management. Keep people informed. The more information your guests have, the happier they will be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, so they'll get they'll go through this process super simple. They just need their first. In this case, since they're picking up at the restaurant, we don't need their address information. Sure. It's their first and last name, their email address and phone number. That's all going to go right into your database, of course. Right. Because you're you're going to want to start uh, communicating with these folks on a, on a regular basis, right? Uh, to Hopefully. to put out the new menu as you do it out. Um, you know, uh, great restaurants like uh, upper casual and fine dining restaurants. Mm -hmm they change their menu pretty much every week, right? So sure. it's a lot different than ordering from Swiss Chalet where, you know, it's mm. not just the quarter chicken, right? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's mixed up all the time. So the, these things have all been built right into our product. And then the correspondence, to give you a sense of, of what the correspondence is, um, when it comes from the restaurant, this isn't from absence, but this is from a, an example of, uh, of, of uh, confirmation email that comes from from the restaurant, from Becta in this case, um, you can see it's all Becta, right? No right. open table here, no Res Plus here, nothing like that. It's all about the restaurant, right? This is their brand, this is their color. It's it's in their language, whatever way they want to say things. And also they have some sister restaurants that they'll, they'll give a, a link out to that. Yes, our name is at the very bottom corner so that sure. we're on the hook if there is any technology issues, but the primary uh, experience should be all about the restaurant, should be completely focused on the restaurant. Um, and and you know what also happens, Jason, is um, when we follow up, up that up with a thank you email, uh, asking for their feedback, and oh, by the way, if you're up to it, would you consider leaving a review on TripAdvisor? You wow. wouldn't believe the impact this has on your brand. Like uh, if That's your drop the mic moment, Peter. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you, you, you could just drop the mic right now and walk off stage. There we go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it, well, it, this... And for me, I mean, that, that was not something that I had previously seen in it. And, and that is key. It's so key to be, to after the transaction, to have some manner of follow-up and to, and to be able to get that back. And you're going to laugh because we had this conversation two days ago. But um, when I had when I had Grant Cardone on the show, right? Okay. <laughs> Grant says people never follow up, and yeah. I've said this many many times. But if you just took, for example, five. Uh, oh, Robbie says to shut down the screen share. <laughs> Oh, shut it down. Okay. I, right. I'd, like, I'd like to talk one little bit more okay. about this when you're done. But. Yeah. So if you, if you take uh, just 20 minutes out of your day as an operator and contact your, your clients, just take five, of, just call five of them up and say, yep. hi, thanks very much for, for, uh, hi, I'm Jason. I saw you were into our restaurant last night or, or uh, saw you order from us last night. We just wanted to call and say, hey, thanks so much for your business. Uh, how was everything? Uh, is there, you know, any, anything that we could improve? We just want to say, thanks. That's it. Right. Yeah. Imagine if you did that just for five customers through over 300 times a year, how much more, how much return customers would you have from that? And how much would your, uh, would your, would your guests appreciate having just gotten that follow-up? Thank you. Right. right. The fact that this automatically does, it just blows my mind. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did, did we lose our screen share or you can still see my screen? I can still see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause the one thing I wanted to mention, right. like, like I totally agree with it. Like, like that's, that's so unusual to call up a customer eh? and they're just absolutely delighted. I, I totally agree with you. I love it. And, uh, and uh, like, for example, here, we've got a, a thousand over a thousand restaurants here in Ottawa. that are in the mid range to fine dining. Right. Uh, so this is a customer Fraser cafe. Uh, this is a customer, number four, um, number seven, Gazelle, that's a customer. Absence is a customer. We looked at their website. Uh, Becta is a customer. So half of the top 10 restaurants in Ottawa, right. out of over a thousand, are using Res Plus. And a lot of it is simply because of that thank you email that goes out at the end saying, you know, if you're up to it, would you mind leaving a little bit of feedback for us? That's so huge. It's so and huge. simple, huge yeah. and simple, right? Yeah. For sure. So. And the the system is set up so there's also an integrated history as well so if you know that uh somebody's coming back in then it, when when dining comes back 
then you can actually see ahead of time, right? What they ordered last mm -hmm. time. So how does, I mean, I'm going to ask you how it works, but how's it working out on that end? Because I imagine it's a fantastic tool. Fantastic. Yeah. And it works right? like, like it's not that we've just seen it work with a couple of customers. We've seen it work across our whole customer base. Right. You know, you, you just, you just pay attention to these touch points with your guests because, you know, you pretty much need to work with, you know, a 70% repeat, uh, repeating diner, right? Right. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll find, uh, you obviously are going to find new, new, uh, uh, new guests as, as you go along too, as word spreads and so on, but you're really reliant on having these repeat and loyal customers. So unless you're going to delight them with your food and cuisine, but also extending your hospitality through technology, right. it's pretty hard to stay ahead of the game. That's the, the very cool thing about this setup is that it's very focused on uh, working with the customers that you have, treating them well, making sure that they're thanked, making sure that you know something about them before they come back. And it's yeah. a lot easier <laughs> to upsell and to sell more. And there's a lot less money spent on getting people to come back in the door than it is to come in the door the first time. That's yeah. for, for me when I, when I go through the res plus system and I look at it and I just go, that was smart. That was smart. Well thought of that was smart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I like so much about it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now the other thing too, is when you're doing your e-marketing and, and, and uh, mail outs and things like that, your, your email mail outs, like you, you briefly mentioned about um, birthdays and anniversaries and stuff like that in the newsletter. Yeah. I mean, to, in a, in a, in any restaurant that's key, but in a restaurant where it's it's maybe a little more upscale, where that where that is the the kind of place where you go for that special occasion to be able to 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 say, hey, I noticed that your anniversary is coming up. Would love to have you. Yes, yes, exactly. Nobody does that. <laughs> yeah, and right? we do. Yeah, and it's so simple to do, right? You just need we we just include, uh, and it's completely up to restaurant whether they want to do something like that. Uh, easy for us to turn it on for you. And it's simple. All the guest needs to do is just what month of the year is their anniversary in? Uh, what's their name and what's the email address? That's it. We don't need any more information than that. So every year, a few days before your anniversary month, we'll send a beautiful uh, email to you with all your colors and, and everything. And, you know, we, we uh, just wanted to congratulate you on your anniversary coming up and we'd love to host uh, your celebratory evening. It's just so simple. And, and, you know, it's funny, um, you know, when you, when you develop the technology, you, you put your own email address in there as a test, right? Right. And, and so, so I, you know, when my anniversary comes up, I get all these test emails coming from all of our customers. Right? And, and, it, and it's There's still, no way you'll ever forget your anniversary. <laughs> no, well, that's true. That's true. That would never happen. But, but it, it just kind of, it's just kind of neat when somebody remembers, you know, it, and it I, I know it's technology that's doing it, but uh, it still puts a smile on your face. But the fact that somebody put that in place, not just as a reminder, but as a, uh, as a, Hey, you thought you thought of us and or you've set something else, something up to think of us as a, yeah. uh, as a client, as a guest, not just yeah. a, not just another body coming through the door. Where we're going to find a seat. We're going to turn the, we're going to yeah. feed you. We're going to turn the table. And we're going to kick you back out. We're looking forward to seeing for the special occasion again. Yeah, which, absolutely. Which is, yeah. which really, I mean, even though it's technology based is a, is a fantastic personal touch. Yeah, absolutely. And fully green too, right? Oh yeah. No, yeah. Uh, no trees harmed in the making of this. No trees harmed. That's <laughs> right. No, no trees or animals harmed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I love it. But, you know, uh, restaurants are unique. They, they've got so much to show people. People just love food photography. They just salivate, you know, like they, they love that. And, and they love reading menus and stuff like that. Like there's all your content. You don't have to worry about creating these onerous uh, newsletters, a couple of food shots, uh, a sure. menu. You just e-blast that out. And, and it's as simple in Res Plus as simply just clicking send. Because uh, whenever anybody does anything on your website, your control, it's all your data, right? Uh, right. There's, there's no, uh, it's your data, your data, your guests, your, your guests, right? They're not ours. Right. They're you as a restaurateur. 
and uh, click one button and it all goes out and it's completely compliant to all the Canadian legislation. Well, if we talk about the, the e-blasts and the, and the newsletters and, 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 and speaking with your guests uh, on an ongoing basis or even a, even a few times a year with your, uh, through email, um, we have uh, a client, Lance Popke, who's got a company called Restaurant Funnel. And his, and his whole thing is based on um, communicating with your, with your guests via email. And that they will pay attention to more so than a social media post that just has your logo on it or something blinking, right? This is something that's more personal. Even if it's automatically generated, it's still something that personally comes to, uh, comes to your, your contact, right? Yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it's, it's wonderful. Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, like likely 300 people that have subscribed to your restaurant website is more valuable than 3000 social followers. Oh, huge. And, and that, and that, that was a hard for me to get my head wrapped around, but, and I heard it from one customer and I thought, well, that's interesting. Let me think about that. And then I started hearing it from another customer and another customer. So during this COVID season, um, you know, like they, they thought, you know, they had so many thousands of people following them and, and there was, they were interested in following them and everything like that, but they were doing business. Like they were getting their online orders from people that had subscribed to have emails pushed out to them. Right. So it's, uh, you know, that, that to me seems a little counterintuitive because, you know, everybody we talk about today, right. It's all about social media and that's right. important for your brand. But, but when it comes to actually transacting business, it seems that. The email list is king. Well, it, it definitely is, and it's and it acts as a good reminder of your of your favorite place, right? The mm -hmm. the especially now, when people are wondering, well, what's open? What's you know, are these people still around? Yeah. Uh, you know, are they are they up to date? Are they only available between five and eight now? Are they you know what's what's going on with them, or do they have a limited menu? Uh, all all the questions that you might have. I mean, just because many 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 people are still doing pickup orders and delivery orders and all of that. And including yeah. myself yeah. almost daily where, yeah. where, you know, we're working late and we're thinking, you know, where, where we're going to get this or what's available. Is that restaurant still, are they still in business? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Cause we've got lots of favorite places, but we, we still don't know if a lot of them are still around. Yeah. 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 We sure hope they are. Cause well, man, I, I want to go to my favorite restaurants when we get all done this, eh? The other thing too is that is we've noticed that uh, ones that that happen to have been on a third party delivery app before, even if it was for a pickup, they're not on there now. Yeah. Which of course leads us to wonder: so are they still in business, or did they just go off of here and go on to somewhere else, or did they just completely drop it and you can just go pick it up? So, but yeah. if you're having that communication in the way that you have this set up, it's that's yeah. very very well thought out and very key. Yeah, it works well. Now, Jason, I was also noticing in the chat log here, we had uh, somebody was asking whether we can use all of these components into their own website, whether it has to be a Res Plus website or it could be their own website and then and then put, you know, reservation component in there, put the e-marketing, the online ordering. And, and that's true. So we're happy to do it that way as well. So you can inject that. And some good examples of that, uh, the, there's uh, several keg restaurants uh, that, that use our reservation system for the keg. Uh, for the restaurant. That works well. Even the National Arts Center uh, has a wonderful restaurant there that's been using our technology for years and years uh, for their, for, uh, for one, one Elgin as their restaurant. Uh, right. Works, works wonderful for them. Uh, we've got uh, several teaching uh, uh, colleges across Canada that are using Res Plus and they're also putting it into their, res, uh, into their own website because they've got a team of uh, web designers at the college sure. that do all these things. They want to have control of that. They want to do something very customized, yeah. but they don't want to reinvent a reservation system. So they inject it into theirs. So that's, that's completely up that. to you as well. Yeah. So the if you, if you've already put out the, 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 the big money and, uh, and <laughs> had your site designed, this is something that you can integrate. That's right. We, we can do that. We can still likely still prove to you that it would be better. And there's no extra cost for us to host it, by the way. It's, sure. it's not like you're saving any money or anything. Right. Um, but, uh, but, but it still is likely still better to use uh, Res Plus. And the reason for that is for security. Yeah. 
and for performance and other aspects that it's been designed specifically for restaurants. So for example, when we put up your Mother's Day menu, you want the system to automatically take that Mother's Day menu down on Monday. Right. Right. And, and you want your Valentine's Day is very important to you, but you don't want to start putting that menu up in December because people don't want to see that then. But maybe mid-January, you put an effective date on that new menu and up it comes. And maybe we do some special things with the reservation system on February 14th too. So all of those things have been all well thought out and put into Res Plus. So it's all designed uh, for a, a restaurateur who we know for sure their first love is not technology. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> ever. Yeah. I don't think that's ever going to change. Yeah. I, I, I got an email back from a, a speaking thing that I'm doing in Russia. And mm -hmm. I sent off a, a video that I did yesterday and a, and a, and a, and a bunch of files that, that uh, Robbie had put in a Dropbox for me because I'm technologically illiterate for the most part. And she says, just go and take them and put them in the email and send it off and it'll be fine. So I get an email back that said, well, we got one thing that you sent out of the six. It looked great, but if you wouldn't mind resending and I'm, and I'm sitting there thinking, God, I, I, am, I am not a technology guy. I'm a hospitality guy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why you're in the industry and likely why you'll always be in the industry, right? Because yeah. it's, it's just woven right into your, into your DNA, right? Well, it, it's like people. the mob. They keep pulling me back in, right? I'm like Michael Corleone. <laughs> I've, yeah. I, I've, I've, I've tried to get out a few times, but it's my love. So <laughs> I, it, oh. it, and the fun thing about it is I get to learn stuff every day mm -hmm. from people who are innovative and, and innovative. And when I first met you at Restaurants Canada show this year, and we started talking about how, how your system works and, and throttling the kitchen. And I thought, my God, he's actually thought about it. And if you, <laughs> if you knew the amount of, of techies uh, that, I, that I spoke to over the few days that I was in Toronto at the show, 99.9% .9 of the time, my eyes glazed over and I went, no, no, I don't <laughs> get it. But you, sir, you got it figured out. <laughs> Well, you know the, 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 you know what happened, uh, Jason, was that, was that uh, when we set up a board of advisors when we first got into this 15 years ago, right? And, and uh, I, I'd always heard this statistic, maybe you can back this up, that one in four people have worked in, in the hospitality industry at some time in their career. Oh, probably. That's, that's the stat I've heard. Our whole board of advisors, not a single person had ever worked in a restaurant. So perfect, let's develop a product for the restaurant industry. And you think, oh man, they've gone squirrely or something like that. You know what it forced us to do? It forced us to listen to everybody. And, right. and we just assumed there must be like one or two, maybe three different ways of running a restaurant. No, there's likely a thousand. <laughs> and, and it was taking all of those, taking all that feedback from people and, and listening to what their pain points were and stuff like that and finding some common threads and making Res Plus so that it's, it's not imposing how to run your restaurant on you. It's you imposing on Res Plus how you want to run your restaurant because every restaurant has a different concept. They do different things. They value things differently and they're all right. It's not that they're wrong and it's all why we love these independent restaurants so much is because, you know, they're all so different. And uh, well, and the, the, the key thing that you, that you said in there that sits with me is that there's a, there's a thousand things with each different restaurant. It's not just whether or not you can make a good soup. It's whether, it's whether or not you can manage all of the thousand little fires that are going on. And yeah. to, to have you guys listen to what those things are and to integrate them into your system is just absolutely key. I can't wait till you're like Jeff Bezos with this business and it, and <laughs> everywhere. Right. And, and it, it, because that for me is the way that I, that I see the industry embracing um, what you guys are doing. You've been 15 years now. You've got many, many clients. Um, I, I really, I really look forward to it, to you being just a, a common household name, just like, because it's, it's so beneficial for the industry. What you're doing, Peter is, is it's, it's what we need. It's the, it's the attention to detail and it's the attention to what we do for a living that we need to be working with, with guys like you for us, to, for us to be able to survive. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and you're, I know you're going to come up with more ideas tomorrow. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the following week and the following week. And we're just going to keep putting these ideas into it. I love yeah. it. I yeah. love it. Absolutely. So for under 200 bucks a month, the, the thought process, the service, the integration and all of this stuff uh, for res plus is, it's, it's where it's what restaurants need to be using. Uh, this is, this isn't something that you are going to find out, uh, next week when you get your payment back from your third party app company or your reservations company that they've taken 20 or 30% of your, of your business, uh, and then charge you additional fees. Uh, this is an amazing service designed for the masses, for the massive restaurants, uh, but listens to the specific needs of your, of your restaurant. Um, my guest today has been Peter Hall of Res Plus. Peter, thanks so much for coming on, doing the show, uh, walking us through the beautiful sites, the beautiful websites, and the really cool and clean integration. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I, and I can't wait to talk about you guys more and more and more, and can't wait to have you on again, too, to talk about what new stuff is going on with you guys. Thanks again so much, man. Thank you very much for hosting. It's uh, such a pleasure. And, and I look forward to coming back again, uh, if you'll have me. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to have you on a, uh, on a tech panel, actually, where, where, we, <laughs> where we have different technologies that are doing different things around the restaurant, too. Because we are very particular about um, who we talk to and who we bring on. Because, again, I, I, I think that there are a lot of tech companies, and, and I don't say that in a bad, as a, as a, as a swear word, but I, I, there are a lot of tech companies who who are not looking at things the way that uh, the way that operators do. Yeah. And, and, and uh, your company, uh, companies like Galley Solutions, uh, who really put a lot of thought process into the, into the mechanics of, of food production, those guys have put a lot of thought into it. I love working with guys like you to be, <laughs> because we are having the same conversation. Yeah. Right. We're, I, I'm, I'm not glazed over in, in what you're doing and you get what we're doing. So yeah. uh, I think it's, I think it's really cool to, to be able to have a, a tech panel like that, where we'd be able to introduce how these different things can, can make your life easier as a restaurateur, uh, can make your life more profitable as a restaurateur, yeah. simply by having more attention paid and a better thought process to it. Well, I'd, I'd sure welcome that. That would be uh, so much fun. And, well, let's do it uh, man, soon. I love being part of this industry. It's uh, it's so exciting. It's a new toy every day. <laughs> it's, it's very much <laughs> is. <laughs> well, yeah. thanks again for joining me, Peter. Uh, and we'll see you soon. Okay. Everybody, go check out Res Plus. If you have a restaurant, if you have a hotel, a cafe, a bar, uh, if you serve food and you deal with the public, this is a product and a service that you need to know book a, a, a demo with Peter uh, and his team, have, a, have an intelligent conversation with Peter and his team about what you do. Uh, you're certainly not going to regret it. And the proof is in the pudding. You can take a look at, at uh, half of the top 10 uh, restaurants on Expedia in, in Ottawa are on Res Plus, And there's a reason why they're in the top 10. Thanks again, Peter. Have a great day, my friend. Thank you. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye.